three. Hi everyone, um, it's my great pleasure today to welcome Chris Snook as my guest um, on episode seven of Aspects of Design. Chris is an interiors and uh, architectural photographer. He's originally from Yorkshire and he now calls London home. Um, Chris uh, loves to tell the story of a building, a room or even a piece of furniture through the beautiful photographs that he takes. So as well as many interior designers, stylists and and architectural practices. Chris's clients include the likes of Farrow and Ball, Nicholas Anthony, 25 Beautiful Homes, House Beautiful, Ideal Homes, Real Homes, House, The Metro, Grand Designs, and that's just to name but a few. So listen, Chris, welcome, and uh, thank you for joining me today. Hi, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, doing well, thanks. Yeah, yeah, good. good. <laughs> it's a nice day. Listen, I just want to, the first question I want to ask you was, um, uh, you studied art and design at um, Leeds Beckett University. So did you know at that stage you were going to be um, a professional interior photographer or did you have other plans? Um, so when I, 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 when I went to study uh, in Leeds, yeah, before I did an art foundation course, and I sort of like toying between uh, photography and I really like screen printing. Okay. Like silk screens and stuff. But um, so I sort of did that in my first year at uni with photography. And I suppose at that point, probably like at my age, but like digital was obviously like the thing. And why would anyone, everyone wanted things now? So it was like, why would you do screen printing when you could just go to a computer and print it and design it on Photoshop or something? So. I sort of, as much as I loved it, I decided against doing it just because at that point there wasn't really, I couldn't really see the need for it. Mm -hmm. Obviously now, like screen printing sort of come back and it's, it's, you know, it's a bit of an artisan sort of thing to do and you can, well, you can make good money from it and stuff now. And it's just, yeah, but I did really enjoy it. But um, yeah, so I sort of chose photography um, and yeah, I did a bit of like film video work as well alongside it, but yeah, sort of that's how I got into photography anyway. Interior photography, I got into for a different way, but yeah. Yeah, so tell me about um, interior photography. How did you get into that? Because, you know, you're kind of studying it and you're just sort of doing general photography. So how did, you know, how did you get into interior photography specifically? Um, so when I was at uni, um, we sort of got, uh, well, they sort of made it known that they'd be keen for us to go work in a studio or find, you know, one day a week, go work with someone. Um, so there was like a studio quite close to where I lived at uni at the time. And um, I went and worked there one day, yeah, one day a week. And basically their studio was split into two. So they had one side, which they shot like models for sort of, I suppose at the time lads mags and stuff like that. Oh, so okay. you're, so you're like FHM and you then think like that's what piqued your interest, maybe. <laughs> I, to be fair, I didn't I didn't really know they did they did like fashion and stuff. I want well. to be in that room. <laughs> <laughs> but um and then the other half of the business they well it, it was like lifestyle and set built like sort of stuff for um I think MF they did used to build sets for MFI and shoot MFI kitchens and mm -hmm. bathrooms and stuff like that. Um, so I basically tried both um, while I was there and I just, I, weirdly, I remember at the time my friends were going, wow, it'd be an amazing thing to do, you know, being a, a man and stuff and yeah, I just really didn't enjoy it one bit. It was the weirdest thing working in that sort of industry. I remember like assisting on one shoot and I was just spraying this girl with olive oil uh, and she was in bikini so it gave her that sort of like look yeah. over out the shower. I was just like, I just felt really like demoralized and like I didn't, yeah, I didn't enjoy it. I didn't, yeah, no, I just found well, that's it really interesting because that, that's, I suppose, what you would call glamour photography. Yeah, yeah. So and, suppose... and, you know, and I guess, you know, either that's sort of what, you know, kind of floats your boat or not. And, and yeah. you know, the fact well, that I suppose, you... you know, the being, if, well, I suppose then as well, like 15 years ago. So when you're 20 years old, sort of, yeah, all like all your friends going, well, yeah, it must be amazing. You know, actually, it's really not. It's not, yeah. you know. But in the situation, fun. you're just kind of mortified. You're just, yeah, I guess, you sort of don't know where to look because, yeah, at that point, well, you're quite young. It's quite intimidating. No, definitely. I, but yeah, so then I, I like went into the other side and I enjoyed it much more. Like, <laughs> so you went in the other side and you're like, oh, thank God, a kitchen. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just spray yeah. that with olive oil. I just found it a bit more interesting because you were sort of creating, so we were like building windows and like, so you're basically building a kitchen in a studio, but then you're trying to recreate like the light using like lights and stuff. And it was, it was just quite interesting way of doing it. So you, you were actually shaping things rather than just sort of. You're creating. Yeah. Well, someone just stood there and you know, you're just for taking a picture of, I don't know. I just didn't really, I think that's why I maybe, I quite, I don't really like taking pictures of like, people so yeah, much. portraits yeah and it probably comes stems from yeah. that sort of horror grained in my mind of stood there <laughs> with an olive oil thing just spraying away so yeah so that's how i sort of got into interior so when i yeah when i was there we were building sets so i helped on that and then when i finished uni my first job was working for a company that did um like the three the 360 virtual tours oh yeah yeah because that was such a that was quite a new thing wasn't it yeah so they they um they were based in leeds and they did like stuff for universities and then like show homes and things so they sort i did that and then within that started doing more like still so interior still so i helped them develop like the start of their business doing that and stuff so mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's sort of how I got into, into... Interesting. So do you think that you kind of, you know, had an eye that, that, you know, even then people could sort of see that, you know, you could kind of capture sort of what they wanted? Yeah, I, yeah, I suppose so. And I suppose, the, I suppose the company probably took a bit of a gamble as well. They were quite a young company, but they were all from the same, my university. So they were, they employed, they employed quite a lot of people from the university. So it was quite a nice... Sort of company to work for yeah. and to work within and stuff. A nice so. kind of stepping stone. Yeah, so it was nice, and they they were really yeah they they gave me the opportunity. So yeah, I was very grateful at the time. Mm. But like two, two weeks out of uni, I had a job. So yeah, brilliant. Working straight away. So um, but, but in yeah. photography as well, which I would imagine is is quite difficult to get into as a as an industry. Yeah, well, yeah, and I suppose especially at university, they well at my course, they tried to teach you to be more of an artist rather than i suppose like going down the route of being like a, a business I suppose. yeah running your own business and how do you and, and selling how do you get clients and all that kind yeah. of stuff and but so, listen tell me um uh do you have a favorite room to photograph like are there particular rooms that you particularly like um i, I, I really I, yeah i was chatting to my wife about this recently asked me this I really like kitchens. I don't know why. I, I don't know why. I just knew you were going to say that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I also like quiet kitchens because of like the shape and form, but also they're generally in the more interesting part of the home in terms of like architecture or design and stuff. And I suppose like you know now a lot of kitchens are in within extensions, and you know so you have you know nice architecture they sit within, but also they done nicely by designers and stuff as well so it's I like the mix I think you get of it but yeah I like I quite like straight lines so I like the straight line kind of symmetry of them yeah I did realize for a while on my Instagram I posted lots of kitchens and that's so sort of, yes it must be ingrained and ingrained yeah. from when I worked at you know, that place yeah yeah it's the, your first your first love it's where you feel yeah maybe most kind of comfortable and relaxed because it was your yeah. sort of haven from the horrors of glamour photography <laughs> yeah possibly yeah but yeah I don't know yeah just I just like the shape and form just yeah I just find kitchens quite interesting and I suppose you can be so creative and they're so different you know mm. yeah, and like I said the, the architecture they normally sat within as well so yeah especially as fine people are getting braver and braver with their decisions of kitchens you know sort of maybe stepping away from the the gray or navy yeah blue. yeah definitely mm -hmm. yeah um, I'm sure you probably see as well yeah so. yeah you definitely and it is it, it's kind of going kind of darker and darker and and yeah. we're really moving away from the you know there was a, a phase of you know kind of high gloss white yeah. you know Women. minimalist handle oh kitchens and we've kind of gone the other way to some to to kind of more traditional kitchens but not kind of fully traditional or country kitchens but you've got a more detail in the kitchens and kitchens are kind yeah. of more I think they're they're more kind of personalized now people kind of yeah. want to sort of yeah. put their own stamp on their kitchen but actually yeah. speaking about that and you were saying that you like the symmetry and the lines because my next question was um 
uh, you know, how would you describe, you know, your photographic style? Um, and why do you think interior designers and architects hire you? But before that, because you were saying you like the lines and symmetry. So do you have, you know, what kind of interior style do you like? Is it very, that very, do you prefer, is it that very architectural style or, you know, kind of almost Bauhaus, modernist? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I really like, as if I'm taking photos, I generally quite like, shots which are straight on so like you know like almost so they're flat and i just i just like the form of yeah like the straight lines and stuff rather than obviously you know some shots don't work like that but yeah i find that's how what i quite like i just like looking at deadpan like straight on yeah i don't know why I just yeah i find to like a style which i suppose it does lend itself, that style of shot lends itself probably more to architecture. But I work with a lot of interior designers yeah. who like photographs like that just because it's, you know, nice and straight and it just all looks nice and neat. Whereas, it's, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's quite hard. But, but I, why do you think, why do you think, um, you know, interior designers and architects hire you? Because, you know, you're you know you're very successful you're you know kind of really in demand at the moment we see a lot of your work you know and um, a lot of designers are using you so why do you think that is I mean there is the obviously the style but you know I think that you're able to sort of convey that interior designer style because you know the work is very different you know and mm -hmm. you kind of uh, here's me answering your question now I'm not going to answer it you answer it this is quite good that you answer it <laughs> <laughs> I always, I always struggle to sort of work out what my style is and it's sort of, I, yeah, I, d I don't think I necessarily have it in my head like, oh, it needs to be like this. I obviously just automatically do something like this and yeah, I don't, yeah, it's just, but I, I do shoot differently for different, yeah, maybe different, I have some designers who don't like working with flash and they like it all natural so you get like the natural tones, whereas sometimes I don't mind adding a bit of like flash to add the extra sort of fill or sometimes a bit more depth. I mm -hmm. don't know yet. It's a tough one, yeah. But I, I, I don't know, I seem to try and, I like discussing with the designer before like what we want to shoot and what works. And then I suppose trying to like, because some things don't necessarily always look, when you look at it in the eye, they don't always look great. So mm -hmm. I suppose I did a shoot yesterday with a client and sort of, we were walking around and I was like, oh, as I came into the room, I really liked this sort of, you know, set up shot. I was like, oh yeah. And she sort of, I don't know, yeah, she was like, this is sort of why we want to work with you. Cause I quite like the way you're going around and saying, seeing stuff I wouldn't necessarily see. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, but that's it because I guess a bit like a designer can see the sort of finished scheme in their head. You, you, yeah. can, you can visualize it in the room, but I guess you as a photographer, you can sort of see how it will look in that image and how what it needs to happen or how you need to shoot it and that's why you need a good photographer i think because the finished room is going to look, as you're in it is going to look and should look very different to an image that you take because it's stylized yeah, yeah. and it's sort of i've yeah, I've done shoots of companies and we we sort of if you turn around and look behind the camera there's like we've moved everything out of the room apart from like this sofa so you basically change the whole room yeah. around yeah get, shot because yeah when you i suppose it's like when you style maybe as a home to sell so like you know if you dress a home to sell it like it looks good when you walk around but when you try and take a photo it it all like it all weirdly lines up incorrectly so you need to like move stuff so yeah. it, it actually looks good in the frame whereas i suppose you can you could just go in and just take photos but it doesn't necessarily yeah look. and it's kind of it's it's whatever that extra bit is that you add it's that eye being able to see i guess it's being it, it is being like a painter almost because you can sort of see the composition you know yeah. what yeah. kind of composition is going to work in that finished image which will be different to how you know the furniture layout of the space no definitely yeah and yeah, yeah. that's why it's sort of like when you you get working with designers and you both you bounce ideas off each other or even with like an architect as well and stuff you sort of yeah it's, yeah, it's, yeah, I find it. Um, it's, yeah, but I, yeah, I don't know if I, I must have a style, but yeah. I'm yeah, just... I know it's really difficult because I think if people say to me, "Oh, what's your interior design style?" and I kind of find it difficult to answer that yeah. because it depends I... on the client and what they want, and you know, yeah. and but obviously, if there, I bring you know something to yeah. it. 
oxygen. No, exactly. is. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But yeah, I might have to look more into what my style is. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, whatever it is, you're obviously doing doing it right. So don't overthink it. I don't want to I don't want to ruin the magic. <laughs> but listen, tell me, because you obviously do a lot of um, commercial stuff as well as residential stuff and you do stuff yeah. for you know, big companies as well as, you know, kind of uh, individual designers. So do you have a preference between, um, you know, shooting commercial um, and residential or is it just? I probably prefer residential because more just because I suppose, yeah, I quite like looking at ideas like people's homes and maybe try and implement it in my own. Yeah, you must get so much inspiration. Yeah, but generally most of it I can't afford. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I know, I know. Me too. <laughs> um, yeah, there is. But then I suppose you can, you know, you can still steal an idea and do it on a different budget or level. But um, I do, yeah, I do like commercial shoots as well. But yeah, I don't know. I just find residential a bit more, yeah, interesting. But yeah, that, that, don't get me wrong. I like, like, we shot a really cool office the last couple of days mm. in, in Shoreditch. Um, yeah, I just find, uh, yeah, I just it, it's a bit more individual, I suppose. It's more tailored to a personality rather, I suppose, maybe with commercial. Obviously, it's much bigger scales you're working on. So uh, I suppose maybe there's not quite as much person like a, a person's personality in it which is what i quite like about resident yeah. well it's it goes back to what you know what we were saying about you know the photographs that you take you like to tell a story yeah and, that, no, and that's what it's about you're kind of bringing something more than just a, a collection of objects you're you're, yeah. you're trying to tell a story so i guess that's that's what it is and each you know in in a residential setting each story is different and each you know there there are so many ways you can tell that story no, it's like i suppose i notice more and more and i suppose you probably have yourself like with even with like small like cloak rooms or you know small toilets people are coming really brave and yeah that'll be the room in the house where they go all out with like crazy wallpaper or really dark and moody or really bright you know colors and stuff so it's it's stuff like that which is quite nice i suppose maybe in an office because it is you either deadlines tighter or you maybe you've got to be a little bit maybe more safe i don't know yeah yeah and i guess with the commercial um jobs you know the const there are um Con not constraints but there are you know certain things that you have to adhere to you know if it's an office it's a working space there's health and safety you know it's kind of you know if it's function over everything it's function yeah. first and then yeah, the especially system. more now as well with like I suppose the situation we're in oh gosh yeah absolutely well that's yeah that's changing a lot of things you know it'd be interesting to see further down the line how that kind of feeds into design of you know new design of spaces and yeah. you know new builds about commercial them. yeah commercial yeah. design i think or yeah all yeah. developments which are designed and then you know they have um, communal spaces and stuff as well yeah i mean even there. things like you know we probably start seeing um you know and then kind of within time it will just become the norm a bit a little bit like when we started seeing um accessible bathrooms you know for you know we wheelchair accessible or you know accessible bathrooms they weren't kind of a common thing they weren't the law but they became law and now they're everywhere and we just sort of you know take them for granted they're there it's almost if there wasn't one there we would wonder why so i sort of think from this as well we'll start seeing you know doors that you can open with your feet or that i noticed that in the um design chelsea design center yeah but, um for the toilets they had the thing where you can open the door with your feet yeah yeah and we'll start seeing that becoming more and more prevalent i think that that will just become the norm um, uh, yeah. you know which is which is weird like who would have thought but you know you've got yeah. to sort of adapt but listen my next question was and and i i'm, I'm wondering how you're going to answer this now and um, given um your um uh traumatic foray into um glamour photography but um uh, you know, there's, you know, you sometimes see interior photographs and you see them sometimes with people in them and sometimes without people in them. And, and sometimes the people are blurred. I know that Living Etc. was very big into blurry people. So what's your take on that? Do you like including people or not? Um, I actually, I don't mind including, I actually quite like including people sometimes in photographs. Um, 
yeah, for architecture, even with designers as well. I just, yeah, I just don't like doing a portrait of yeah. someone. I think it's quite nice sometimes if you're in a space that if you're, I do, yeah, I've got some kitchen clients who want sometimes shots of people in either blurred or doing something. I suppose it gives a bit of life to it and a bit yeah. of functionality, especially in I just you know, architecture as well. It gives a bit of scale and life. And I know architects are quite keen on either still or blurry people. Mm. Uh, yeah, I do, yeah, I do actually quite like it, surprisingly. So I didn't get too traumatised. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just doing a, like a headshot of someone. Yeah. I sort. suppose portraiture is, is what you, is, you know, uh, what I did, makes I you uncomfortable. Did but actually, yeah. just going on from that, it's just made me think, you know, in terms of sort of people and in, in, in humanising a space. And have you noticed, um, you know, in your sort of interiors photography career, have you noticed um, plants becoming more and more prevalent <laughs> and popular in interiors? Because when I started, nobody put up, you know, you'd put fresh flowers in a shoot or something or an arrangement, but there was no plants. But now it seems to be a big thing. Would you agree? Yeah, everywhere. Like, oh, I'm, I'm looking like behind my laptop in my living room, we've got like, five plants but yeah just be there but yeah i think um yeah definitely i think people yeah i suppose it just again it's like greenery in life it just it, i think it adds plants as they feel like it adds a bit of freshness yeah yeah i definitely yeah just everywhere people have them now so because i'm looking at your um looking at you and you've got a plant behind you and i'm looking at uh, me too, I've, yeah. got a, I've got a plant <laughs> behind me but i think um even more so i think during lockdown people have realized that they just you know we need to be close to nature and it and, and it really does even like in a photograph but even in you know a, a space a room in your house it just it gives some life to that room it just is it's a living thing yeah the office i shot the last couple of days they had like hundreds of plants in there like loads everywhere like but then part of the design, they've designed um, these sort of plywood shelving, which had planters in them. So underneath is their lockers, but then they had planters with plants all in. So I suppose to give that sort of feeling of, you know, yeah. well-being and stuff. Yeah, and it is, it's all about, you know, biophilic design, well-being, yeah. wellness, and that is all part of it. Yeah, it's really interesting um, to see yeah. that. I feel like yeah, oh. biophilic design I feel like it's definitely getting Say that again. The biophilic design I definitely feel like it's getting a bit bigger as well. Yeah, and, and I think because of um, you know, COVID and lockdown, I think it it's it people are realizing how important it is for us yeah. and our well-being um you know and pe people's gardens you know which is is kind of another thing you know anyone who ha had outside space i think really cherished it yeah, uh, yeah. you know and and kind of looked after but look um i wanted to i think you mentioned it earlier when you were talking about you know your sort of beginning of your career and shooting kitchens and creating um you know, kitchen, creating this space and creating windows and lighting. So lighting is really, really important, obviously, in interiors photography. So um, tell us, what kind of light do you think is best for taking photos? And I've got about four questions here. And is there a certain time of day that's best? You know, do you bring lighting to a shoot? Tell me how, where you are with lighting on a shoot. Um, so I, I always have lighting either in my car or take so i take it essentially to the shoe um but then I, yeah I, yeah I, I quite like using a little like i think i was saying earlier a little bit of flash sometimes but then i do quite like sometimes not using it so like just the natural light i'm not a fan of like lights on and using the um you know sort of like the wall lights and ceiling lights and stuff the, the 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 you mean the lights that are in the space yeah so i generally don't really like that um i suppose for time that the actual light from outside i find flat white cloud to be for for interior like for when you're shooting interior design because it's a bit more the light levels inside and outside are quite a bit more similar sort of i suppose like today it's so sunny that it's nice with the uh, the shadows and stuff but but then i suppose if you've got you know if you're shooting like a, a living room there's like a sofa with like some cushions or something which have got some nice detailing on then you've got this big pool of sunlight on it and you can't really see it because it's blown out in the photo mm -hmm. 
sort of if you had a flat light you sort of don't really get that imbalance so it's yeah i think shooting in white clouds my favorite sort of weather for shooting interiors then mm. architecture it's good to have sun because it's quite nice having those like shadows coming in and those pools of light so it yeah it varies really but um yeah i also yeah i like using um i, I generally like using natural light as much as possible mm. and then where needed sometimes using flash and stuff or like when it's like quite dark sort of in the more towards the winter months you've got less light you sort of find i'm using more artificial light to, yeah you know, yeah space. so you can still shoot um you know through the winter months yeah so you just obviously have a bit of a shorter so by like three o'clock you sort of the yeah. day is over really because mm. the light noticeably disappears but yeah. um unless you use big um sort of like big lights which uh yeah, they're just not, yeah, art, they just make it too artificial. I yeah, think. do they sort of kind of um, not bleach it out, but sort of flat, you don't get that sort of intensity. Yeah, you just don't get the depth you get from natural light. Mm. But, and is yeah. there, a, what's the, I mean, is there an ideal time of the day to, you know, shoot? I do, I suppose it depends, because I, if, I was shooting, if I was shooting my own house, I'd shoot like, one part of it at one time of the day and one part another time of the day because of the way the the light goes so i yeah. suppose yeah yeah, and, yeah and i suppose it depends on the orientation of the house as well or mm. that, yeah it's all generally for uh, architects i'll ask them you know what the orientation is and i've got like an app which tells you where the the arc of the sun so you oh, can fantastic. see fantastic yeah, yeah, yeah. So where the sun travels over, over uh, the day. At certain times of the day. So, you know, if it's a day like today and I was doing a shoot for an architect and you'd like, okay, well, the sun's going to be in this room between this time and this time, and then it'll be at the back of the house at this time. So I suppose it's part of like planning, planning the shoot. Mm -hmm. So yeah, generally I would ask architects what, you know, orientation the house is to try and if, if we do have a sunny day, which is not always. Yeah likely then at least then we can sort of plan it to you know try and get the best shots possible and tell me so how did you cope um <clears throat> when we had that recent um you know swelteringly hot weather of like 35 degrees were you were you working were you like kind of yay the sun is amazing or were you like oh my god i'm melting um well i was melting i actually had um i was doing a shoot for an art company in my in my house um, that day and we were all like dripping wet my wife was like bringing us in ice lollies and stuff and iced coffees but yeah it's almost like too hot to work I remember doing a shoot for a design build company I was just like I was glad to be outside but mm. yeah it's uh yeah it's not London's not built for it so when you're inside like a house a Victorian house they're not generally no and we don't have air comms so you know no. it, can't yeah. cope really. Uh, yeah, one of the other hot days, I'd, I'd had a shoot in a, a apartment in Fulham, and the uh, they had aircon, but the aircon broke, so it was, <laughs> so it was, yeah. So we were there was one room where the air conditioning worked. So whenever we stopped shooting, we just went into run in there. Minutes, yeah, cooled down, and then went back into um, the hot apartment. Hot, but, yeah, hot box because it is. It's just kind of so hot so kind of with, with that in mind what what sort of what are the kind of challenges that you face as an interiors photographer um you know what sort of things that you kind of that you find difficult or that you have to deal with um yeah yeah i suppose like pricings pricing people you know quoting for stuff can be quite difficult whether to you know if you over quote under quote um, I suppose my own personal problem with her is like availability. It's like trying to um, keep, yeah, fit people in, but also like I, I hate letting people down or, um, you know, saying, I suppose saying no, really. So it's, it's trying to find a balance where you can, you know, do everything and I can't really clone myself. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'd say that's quite a, a difficult part of um things at the moment it's just been available and sort of yeah so it's, it's, yeah that's, well it's not a bad predict i mean it is because you know yeah, you're guilty but you know to be in that predicament 
where you're kind of really in demand and you're busy and you know people you know I, I guess unless they have a particular deadline they're they're happy to wait for you because they want to work yeah, yeah generally, generally people are happy to wait but then yeah you do have stuff which has to be done by a deadline so yeah but there's you know there's work I have to turn away or turn down or just can't do but mm -hmm. yes yeah, it's a good headache to have, but yeah, I find that quite... Um, yeah, I know, it is. It is. You kind of think it would be a nice headache to have, but actually having to, to deal with that and juggle it and, and, and feeling a little bit guilty because you're not being able, you know, you're letting somebody down. Or, or But do you ever have a situation where you have maybe a client who says, right, I want to make you, you make this room look gorgeous, like their expectations are that you're just going to make it look fabulous, but actually the 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 room isn't up to that standard in the first place like yeah I, yeah i probably yeah i'm sure i probably you know where the expectations are is that you know it's almost like magic you're just going to make yeah. it look beautiful no i do know what you mean yeah i suppose yeah i yeah I, I, it's yeah I, i've had shoots like that where i, I don't know maybe there's been yeah they, their expectations are not necessarily too high but what they're expecting and what you can actually achieve are two different things, yeah. But I try and I try and give people, a, you know, people sort of when they do ask to do a shoot and they're sort of, you know, what can you recommend to do or how can we do this? I try and like help out as much as I can. Yeah. So would you do a kind of a like? I mean, I'm just wondering how much sort of prep you do in advance. Would you do like a you know an, an amount of sort of consult pre shoot consultation stuff so you both know kind of exactly what the what the the job entails and what the expectations are. Yeah, I suppose, I suppose it depends maybe on the, the experience of them. Like some people obviously are just starting out. So maybe if they're wanting to work when they're just doing their first shoot or starting out, they might sort of ask them, you know, what, so if we're doing a kitchen, what would you recommend to bring or what can we do or how can we lift the space? Um, stuff like that. So it's trying to give them a, maybe a few tips of what we can do to enhance the so look of the photo. Yeah. Almost so sort of like styling it. Yeah, so I try. I try and do my best. I, I like when it comes to like a living room or a bedroom. I maybe come a bit unstuck because all, with that, it's sort of you're using colours and stuff, which I not really. You know, it's not my area of expertise. And if you've got a, a bed setting and stuff, it's quite difficult to add things. With a kitchen or a bathroom, they're a bit easier to add. You know, fresh products or bringing in toiletries and stuff but yeah i do try and help best i can yeah or even on site like i'm quite happy to you know get hands on and help move things around and stuff mm. So. Mm. oh that's i mean i think that's a that's a, a good thing to know i think that somebody you know that it's a kind of a team effort that you both want yeah. the best out of would, place. And, and also if you're quite happy to sort of help move a sofa slightly or whatever no, definitely. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't just sort of stand there and be like, yeah, you go do that or you go do that. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, Drumming your fingers. Yeah. <laughs> <You're waiting. laughs> I'd rather, uh, I'd rather just get involved. So you're, also, not a, so you're not a diva then? No, not yet. I haven't got to that level. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. No, <laughs> I, love no. it. I, I don't think I ever would be. You know, I, I guess I quite like getting involved because I like doing stuff. So... Mm. Yeah, I'm quite happy to move things around or, you know, if we're doing a shot, I'll, I will say if I think, oh, that doesn't look quite right or... Yeah, oh, well, that's good you know. because you, you need, you know, and that's what you need, that your expertise and your experience in terms of the shot, you know, so it, you kind of getting involved and, 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 you know, kind of sharing that expertise is really good, you know, yeah. and really useful. And I think maybe that's why you're in demand because people really appreciate that. Yeah, I do find it's weird. I find sometimes if I'm in, like, if I go to a friend's house or I go to, like, parents or, like, a restaurant or something, I sort of look at things like, oh, I wouldn't put that there. Or I'd move. It's weird, like, you sort of, in your head, you can imagine taking, like, a photo and it's like, oh, how is, yeah, you sort of have that. I'm sure other photographers have it as well. Like, yeah, you, I was going to ask you that, that, you know, when you're not working, you know, are you, do you have to sort of resist kind of the urge, you know, when you're on holiday or like in a restaurant to sort of kind of, you know, you're taking those shots in your head, you're sort of styling it and arranging it. Yeah, I do. Yeah, definitely. I do find on holiday, I try and I just like try and mentally like switch off. 
But um, yeah, def it's definitely when you're sort of going in restaurants or places or yeah, when I'm on holiday looking at like, architecture, you're sort of like, well, that would make like quite a nice photo and stuff like that. So yeah, definitely, yeah, that definitely comes into play, especially more when you're in a yeah, friend's house or something. I suppose also I'm a bit like, why would you put that there or why would you do that you say this out loud or are you just saying this in your head <laughs> well, probably both <laughs> uh, well i guess it depends on how many um glasses of wine or beer that you've had well yeah <laughs> but yeah, yeah actually I, I went for dinner with a couple of friends last night and we were in a an indian restaurant and it was yeah we were looking at the ceiling and it's like oh, that's such a weird place to have some like dangling Christmas lights so, but yeah you just sort of look at things like that but yeah you can't sort of switch off that critical eye and I think by the same token if you see something that you like you're just sort of constantly snapping and taking photos for just yeah. as inspiration as you're you know in your little kind of image bank yeah well I can imagine yeah especially for someone like yourself a designer that would definitely be you know if you see something you like then you want to capture it yeah, well, because sometimes I'm, you know, I'm going through my photos looking for something else and I'm thinking, why have I got a picture of that? And I look yeah. and I go, oh yeah, because of the window ledge or the door handle or, you know, and, you know, in you know, in restaurants you go to the bathroom and, you know, you get inspired by the bathrooms and you take pictures. Yeah, constantly taking pictures of stuff because then you sort of bank yeah. it for inspiration for something else. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, so um what do you so if an interior designer was was going to hire you you know or hire a photographer what do you think that um they should look for and what do you think that they should what what should they be asking um before they hire uh well i suppose probably my biggest question is sort of like how much it probably is but i suppose um yeah i don't know it's a tricky one i suppose I find like some people when they contact me, like they normally say they've been either following me on Instagram for a while or been recommended me. But I suppose it's trying to find someone who would photograph your style of work best, or ha yeah, I think, yeah, it's a very tricky one. But yeah, I, I definitely try and f look for someone who's who you think would represent your work to the best it can, because there'll be some photographers who will enjoy shooting with like lights on and stuff so they may be more suited to that and i said we all have our own probably our own style that we some may know about and some may not so i'd say yeah that's definitely one thing to to look for and then i suppose a lot of it's like getting on with the person as well yeah. it's more you know you're having that rapport and personality as well um but yeah i suppose rates like are you making sure you can afford it as well the affordability um and yeah i suppose it depends availability which we were talking about earlier mm. um you know if you need something shot relatively quickly and stuff it's good to start yeah, to know kind of what the availability is but i guess yeah. also um uh uh, uh, uh I, I guess photographers work differently in terms of rights i mean in terms of yeah photos, i mean should you be checking that you know you've got unlimited you know you've got ownership of the photos or you've got unlimited because i think some photographers might say that no i've got copyright so kind of yeah. how does that work i suppose the photographer will always retain the copyright is that i suppose like a musician they're the creator mm -hmm. like a mu unless you've sold your copyright but I suppose generally, yeah, I'd, that would be uh, that's a good point actually, yeah, because I suppose normally what the design you and you'd just be paying for a license, so the license would be for you to use them for your like social and marketing or website and stuff. Uh, and I suppose maybe it's worth asking about magazines, you know, asking a photographer if they have connections or mm -hmm. or if you had a connection, you know, you were thinking about getting it putting it into a magazine. What would the terms be for that as well? Mm -hmm. Easy. And does that kind of, is that something that you would do? Is that kind of a collaborative thing where, because obviously you've done so much of your work has been featured in, you know, interior design and architectural magazines and, you know, you've done shoots for them as well. So do you, I mean, would those magazines sometimes approach you and say, Chris, have you got any projects that you think would be, you know, would be worth us looking at including or? Yeah, so yeah, I do. Yeah, I get, yeah, do get emails from some of the magazines. They're sort of saying, We're looking for this. Have you got anything? Or, yeah, this sort of 
style or like we're looking for Christmas houses. Um, I also collaborate with journalists to do that as well. I don't, even like some designers, they, they're quite keen on getting their work published. So they'll go, oh, I'm going to go try and get published at this magazine. So I suppose if, if you know, even when you're doing the shoot, it's like if you want to get it published, you, it's a good idea to try and get a shot with the owner in. Because most oh, magazines, okay, so there's certain criteria that magazines yeah, um, not, look for. Well, not all of them, but most of them will at least want one shot of the homeowner. Okay. So, or if you get that while you're there, it's then you, you've done that. You've got so that you just can... in case. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. That, that I'll need, there have been occasions where I've had to go back and shoot just a shot of the homeowner. Just pick up it's going in the magazine. Yeah, to put it, so to make sure it, it gets inclusion in the magazine. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's a big point. So that's, yeah, that sort of thing is worth um, thinking about as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and because, you know, magazines are, they're always looking for um, shots. And I guess um, they, you know, they will go to photographers first, I suppose, you know, or that's one way of sort of, you know, looking for projects is going to photographers. Photographers and journalists, yeah, it's just mm. those period journalists. But yeah, I suppose photographers, then. They may go straight to, but I suppose you cut out, probably a good thing to say, but I suppose you cut out the journalists and, mm. and their feeds, I suppose the magazine will write it themselves, but, but yeah, yeah, a lot of designers, they'll work with certain journalists who they've worked with for a few years, and yeah, there's, there's, um, a Bow, there's like a website called Bowerbird, which does, helps architectural practices get published and stuff as oh, well. Okay. So, so people, yeah. I guess, could have a look at that and just sort of see if, you know, yeah. that if that was something they were interested in. So look, if somebody wanted um, uh, a career in interiors photography, um, what would your advice be? Because obviously, you know, as I said, you're, you know, you're a bit of a hot ticket at the moment. You know, you're, you know, in demand. You can't keep with up, up with all the work and, you know, we're kind of a lot of, you know, designers are using you and stuff. So, you know, what would your advice be? Um, so I definitely say like try and assist the photographer. Um, that's definitely useful because you can you know get some skills and also it's it's quite hard shooting interiors because there's so many different lightings and you can't control some of it and stuff. So yeah, I definitely say for a young photographer assisting or even contacting designers and maybe being like you know I, you know I've been following you for a while or something and you know would you be happy for me to shoot it? So maybe for free because you want to build your portfolio. Um, or yeah, I just, I, I, yeah, or I started, um, yeah, or you try and maybe, I, yeah, I, so I did quite a bit when I was younger, a bit of estate agent photography as well. And like, you don't get paid very well at all, but it's a good way of learning, you know, you sort of meeting people constantly and then you're photographing these houses. So you can sort of build up a little bit of experience and a portfolio and then, I suppose you hope then you meet the right person along the line and stuff. Mm. So, um, yeah, that sort of helped me. But then even going on platforms, maybe like House or other similar sort of platforms like that, having a good Instagram social media presence. Because I guess that's the, the thing now is that you can, there are all these channels to sort of promote yourself and show your work. Yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah, and I suppose all, a lot of them for free as well, so you're not really, I don't know, I find a lot, of, probably a lot of photographers, their website's not necessarily the first place people will go, It'll, it's maybe like an online portfolio, so having that is, yeah, maybe not your biggest marketing tool anymore, but I don't know, maybe, yeah, getting like a, an agent to represent you as well, but I suppose that's like the cost. Mm. Um, but yeah, starting out, yeah, assisting is definitely one thing to do. I've had a few people assist me and stuff, and yeah, I suppose that's a good way to learn. Yeah, but. yeah, because you're learning kind of on the job, um, yeah, and, and and it's like anything, I suppose, when you're when you're learning, you've just got to be really eager and keen and kind of prepared to just do anything that's kind of asked of you. Yeah, and the, the, the assistant I use regularly, I've, I've sort of passed on work to him that I can't, I can't do. Uh. Um, and it's sort of maybe, maybe not necessarily, maybe some work that I didn't want to do. So I've sort of, you know, 
so he's got some work for it and he's sort of building up what he wants to do so it can work like that if you build a good rapport with someone yeah well. yeah and I, and I think just going back to the sort of the social media and marketing yourself um so do you find now or have you found um do you get a lot of work through instagram um quite a lot yeah quite a big chunk of work co comes through instagram mm. um but i've got yeah other photographers who they get work for instagram quite a lot seem to get work that way i suppose it's just you've got to be constantly not constantly on it but you've got to be posting fairly regular and stuff mm. but i suppose as a photographer you've got the the beauty of your work is taking photos and suppose you're, yeah. you're posting photos or videos so you've got a constant supply of material yeah, content yeah content which yeah i do have some clients so they'll have to reuse content because they can't you know you can't go into a project and take a thousand photos so mm. you've got 20 30 shots and your next project doesn't finish for six months yeah yeah, yeah. Sort of. or you've got like you know situations where you know the the you know the the, the kind of job finishes and and the the clients aren't for whatever reason you know they're not in that position they're not ready for you to take the photos so then obviously you're busy working on other stuff and you're thinking i must go back and get photos of that project so you know it's sort yeah. of trying to kind of juggle all of that as well and um, yeah. So um, uh, during lockdown, I mean, you obviously weren't able to work because you weren't able to go do shoots and stuff. So kind of how did you how did you manage with that? What did you do? Uh, <laughs> um, I, well, I, I did. I think I did maybe like three or four shoots in lockdown. They were empty um, places. So you basically saw met me, let me in and just left me to it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I did like stuff for my website. Um, I signed up to a few like stock websites um, to do stuff like that. And then did a couple of Instagram live things. But I just tried to, and then I, I just kept contact with people, you know, I um, there's a few photographers. We just like, did video calls with each other and stuff and just talked about things and discussed things and tried to help each other out or like give each other tips and then, so a lot of it's doing online, I did so many online tutorials. Oh, uh, you were giving tutorials? No, no, I was doing them. Yeah, I don't, think I'd, be, I don't think I'd be a very good teacher. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, just doing online tutorials or going on... Um, so Zoom. just kind of, what, just kind of uh, honing your skills or upping your skill set or...? Yeah, and then just refreshing some stuff because there's some stuff I don't really use that often. So mm. it's like trying to refresh that. Um, and yeah, I, I, I took, went around the local area and took some photographs of some architecture just to sort of pass the time. And then I actually quite enjoyed every morning, me and my wife would go for a walk around Brockwell Park. Nice. By an hour and a half. And I find that was quite like, needed in that sort of having a walking around like in the fresh air and stuff. Yeah. And at that point, it was, it was quite quiet and there was no noise, there was no cars. Mm. So it was quite actually quite nice to walk around London and hear like birds where yeah. I'm just hearing revving engines and stuff. So or beeping horns or Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I yeah, I did and I, I managed to get some some work into magazines at that point as well, because I could concentrate on doing that. Um so yeah, it was good. And then trying to sort of plan plan how you know things would go from lockdown but mm. yeah those sort of plans went out the window <laughs> yeah yeah and do you, i mean because you're so busy now do you sort of look back and think oh i wish i hadn't been so worried or i wish i just had more fun or i wish i'd relaxed a bit more or, or like were you were you kind of okay you knew you'd be fine um i suppose that everyone i suppose there's always that doubt in because yeah, so none of us knew how long the yeah yeah was. So none of us still know how long this will fully last but um yeah i suppose the the first couple of weeks was quite nice to have some sort of time off but then i suppose after a few weeks you're like oh you know is work going to come back and then i suppose more because of the ec economic factor like did people have money but then i suppose there seemed that there's quite a lot of pent up you know people were quite eager to get things going again and so like it was yeah i managed to like yeah, pick up new clients during lockdown and then like, you know, old work which got postponed came back. So 
it sort of worked out quite nicely. But I'd, yeah, I won't be taking many days off this year after having like six <laughs> weeks off. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's just it's head down. Um, yeah, absolutely. Crack, so listen, crack on till next summer. <laughs> Pardon? I said crack on till next summer. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully we'll be able to go on a holiday next summer. So yeah, fingers yeah. crossed. But so tell me, so um, you know, you were enjoying your walks and stuff during lockdown. So what did you enjoy most during lockdown and what did you miss the most? Uh I actually I missed working. I suppose I missed Although like it's quite a, being a self-employed photographer, it's quite a, I suppose at time, a lonely sort of, you know, you, I suppose probably, it's, you know, a, like a design like yourself, when you work on your own, you don't have other... You don't have a team. Yeah, you don't have a team of people and colleagues and stuff. So, um, yeah, I did miss in lockdown actually working and going into people's houses and having those like fleeting conversations with their clients or my clients and stuff and I suppose because some clients I've worked with for a few years now so it's you know when you see them it's it's nice and stuff to have those conversations so mm -hmm. I, I definitely missed that um yeah I don't know yeah, that I was about it I, I actually did miss working I actually really enjoy I, I was chatting to some friends last night and we were talking about our jobs and one of them's like, yeah, I like my job. I don't really love it. Whereas, I, like two of us, we like we, we, one of them was a furniture designer. We were both actually, yeah, we do really love our jobs. Mm. So was, that's why I sort of missed it. Cause I do miss, you know, not taking photographs. So. Yeah, yeah, and you enjoy, you oh, absolutely, you you love what you do. So yeah, so I feel very lucky for. So you know, doing something that I really enjoy. Yeah, and being good at it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a kind of a, you know, quite handy as well, because it would be all very well if you loved it, but you weren't particularly good at it. Yeah. <laughs> and listen, and what did you enjoy most during lockdown? Um, I, don't know, I suppose it was actually quite nice. Um, I quite enjoyed like cooking and stuff. And yes, but I suppose, although I was at home, obviously, most of the day, it's quite nice being around, spending a bit more time with my wife and stuff. And yeah, just actually enjoying our house and stuff really. It was, although that there was the stress of like, when will work start again? It was quite nice, relaxing and, um, you know, just like chilling out a bit and stuff. I did, I don't miss like the house parties, you know, online chatting to friends and stuff. That sort of, uh, after doing a few of those with 20 people on a screen, that wore out quite quickly. But, it, it's, but it's really hard work and it, because it's so kind of constructed. It's not like you would be if though if you and those 20 people were together, you know, yeah. kind of physically, because you wouldn't be talking and looking at 20 people all the time. You'd uh, be in little kind of groups yeah. and you'd be yeah. kind of mixing. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's really hard work. It was nice, I think, at the start when we all kind of needed to sort of connect. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's kind of hard work. And then people dropping out and then people, you can't hear them. And yeah, no, like, I, when you do it at like a, de a Zoom call with, like, I think up to four is like the maximum you can have. And I think, yeah, we, we had a few with friends, but yeah, they, it just became a bit too stressful. So even the family ones as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I don't, I don't miss that either. But yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. But they were, you know, it was it was kind of nice to know that we could we could do them. You know. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was a good way to connect. Yeah, definitely. But I think it's it, it kind of just shows us that that we do need we really do need kind of physical face to face contact with people because I think meeting friends now. I met a, a client for for lunch. Uh, last week and I haven't seen her for probably over a year now and we've been in contact because I've been working for her remotely you know we've we've been doing stuff and we've kind of had FaceTime calls but and we meet up for lunch occasionally and um we met for lunch and it was just so not we both got so much out of it because it was so nice to be sitting opposite this person and just chatting, uh, you know uh, and I think uh, we will all appreciate that so much more yeah oh yeah the first sort of time you see friends and stuff yeah it was it was great so yeah it was it was quite nice in that way having almost having a bit of separation and then when you see people for the first time it's like wow you know i suppose you come to like treasure those moments a bit more rather than yeah yeah and appreciating them and i think you appreciate you know you know whoever you live with you sort of go you know god actually you know we've we've <laughs> if we can survive this we can survive anything actually we get on yeah. quite well this is quite no. nice and sort of <laughs> 
being kind of cocooned with your family, it was it, it was so extraordinary. But yeah. it was it was nice, you know. Yeah. yeah. So listen, I'm on to the very last question, Chris, um, which is, uh, I just wanted to know, um, because obviously you shoot so many amazing projects, houses, buildings, what would be your dream project to shoot? Uh, well, uh, yeah, this is quite tricky. So there's two, there's two places. One, uh, yeah, they're, they're not like these big crazy things. Uh, one's um, I don't know if you've ever seen Grayson Perry's got a ha uh, the house a house for Essex. Yes, uh, is it like wildly colourful? Yeah, it's and like it's really like, it looks like way. it's made out of like cake. Yeah, it looks. Uh, I've been to see it because um, my wife's parents are from nearby, and uh, yeah, I just really love to go photograph that. I just find find it. I've, I've seen pictures of the inside. It's so fascinating and just crazy. And then the other place is this. Um, Again, it's quite small. Like, it's in New Zealand. It's called like Honeymoon Retreat, mm -hmm. and it's um, near Christchurch on this peninsula. And it's like on the sea. So it's like this weird triangular shape, like three different triangles put together. These rooms. And it's just like the way it's been designed. Quite minimal architecture on this rugged landscape, looking out to the sea. I don't know. That stuff like that, I really find interesting. Where it's I suppose there's a lot of that in Scotland, like the Isle of Skye and stuff yeah. like these cabins just on these remote lakes. I don't know, there's something I quite like about it, like the wilderness. It's, the bit, but it's quite interesting because they're two kind it's of opposite. really opposite things. Like one of them is almost like, um, you know, it, the Hansel and Gretel house. It's kind yeah. of curly and furly and zany and colourful. And, yeah, it's and, really and then the other one is just completely zen. So yeah. that's really interesting. So why those two particular ones? I mean, I mean, in terms of shooting the Grace and Perry house. So now I'm going to have to find images of these and 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 post these um, when we're when we're talking about this when we're promoing this interview. But and put and I'll put up links to to those and I'll put up links for all of your stuff on your Instagram. But. I mean, you know, in terms of shooting the Grace and Perry house, you know, why? What do you think your, what story do you think your photographs would tell? I, I suppose just like the almost like complete ridiculousness of it. I don't know. There's just, I quite like colour. Uh, I'm really weird. I, I suppose the two, that shows probably the two sides of like how maybe our house, or my house is at home, like my, my wife's is that we've got these rooms which are quite colourful like, and we've got like dark colours and a bright sofa and then we've got like this kitchen which is like black and plywood and stuff so it's sort of I don't know combining the two but uh, yeah just the Grace and Perry thing I, I just like I love to the the setting it setting it's in is just it's quite again quite sparse it's just a couple of fields quite near like an estuary it's just it just sticks out like a sore thumb I'd love to show the story of how almost how it doesn't really fit into where it is just yeah yeah so almost like those two things do you think they appeal to you because they're quite brave yeah i suppose the grace and perry thing is because it's brave and you just when you see the interior pictures of it, it's just it's just nuts i don't know and when you go see it obviously i've seen it in real life a couple of times you look at it and you're like it just doesn't look real like you said it, it looks like a, someone's just made it out of cake or something and just put it there it just dropped it there it has no relationship to anything around it it's just yeah you know, this big red and green sort of building it's yeah. almost big it's like a i think it's a one two bedroom cottage like house but yeah it's just crazy i suppose with the other one i just like the the calmness of it and just how it's this, this real rugged landscape and this real bit of modern clean sort of architecture yeah sat within it but yeah there's quite a lot of places in New Zealand which I like that which I quite like, like yeah yeah like yeah. yeah I really like um like cladding which is like birch and stuff like that and black cladding and stuff so that yeah, kind yeah. of sits on the landscape yeah. yeah so yeah I really like that sort of yeah so that's probably the two I'd quite like to do I, I really want to go to New Zealand so that's probably why as well yeah, oh, that's that's really it's really interesting. I was not expecting you to. I don't know what I was expecting you to say, but I <laughs> I wasn't expect. I love it because you know it's just. I think it really shows kind of your 
kind of personality as well and and you know kind of what what you like and what appeals to you but listen thank you so much chris um unfortunately we're at the end but um thank you for taking the time today no problem thanks very much for having me